Hello all, this is Dr. Kathleen Alsip, and I'm going to provide a quick overview of the jejunum and the ileum. The duodenum portion of the small intestine will be discussed in a subsequent lecture by Dr. Fox. The goals of this lecture, as with all the lectures in this series, are to provide you with the scaffolding to better prepare you for your anatomy dissection, but importantly, to prepare you for your upcoming clinical and other basic science lectures. So let's get started. As I said, there are three parts of the small intestine. The most proximal portion is the duodenum. It's also the shortest part, as well as the jejunum and the ileum, and that's what we're going to be focusing on in this particular presentation. The jejunum and the ileum are attached to the posterior body wall by the mesentery. Now, I have the the in quotes because there are various other mesenteries associated with the GI system or folds of meso of peritoneum as we know in the abdomen, but this mesentery is the most substantial and the prominent, thus the the, so capital T-H-E, think of it that way. Between the two layers of the mesentery are going to be the superior mesenteric vessels, a variable amount of fat, you're going to have autonomic nerves, and importantly you'll also have lymph nodes. The ileum will end at the ileocecal junction which is the union of the terminal ileum and the proximal cecum, and at that point you're in the large intestine. So you go from stomach, duodenum, jejunum, and ileum into the large intestine. There is no grossly visible line of demarcation between the jejunum and the ileum, but there are observable differences that are often more pronounced in the more proximal portions of the jejunum and the more distal portions of the ileum. Now, I know that tables can be overwhelming, but I think you will thank me in the end in terms of having these kind of broken down in terms of this differences you'll have with the jejunum and the ileum. So let's go over some of the, the higher quality or the more high yield concepts first. So for the most part, the jejunum is located in the left upper quadrant, while the ileum is going to be in the lower quadrants, particularly the lower right quadrant. So if you want to kind of get yourself organized in terms of where it would be and associated with other organs in those quadrants. The walls of the jejunum are going to be thicker, and importantly, they're going to have a higher frequency of those circular folds on the inside portions than what you'll have with the ileum. And both parts are going to have what's referred to as arterial arcade tiers. So you'll have this beautiful arterial organization associated with the small intestine. You will have arcades, and then you will have straight arteries that are coming off of the arcades that will actually head to the viscera, so directly to the viscera. Both of these arterial arcades are going to be derived from the superior mesenteric artery, and you're going to have more tiers associated with the ileum than what you will have with the jejunum. The straight arteries of the jejunum are going to be longer and wider, but they will be less numerous than what you have in association with the ileum. And as mentioned before, the arterial for supply for the jejunum and ileum is solely derived from the superior mesenteric artery. So you can see the very large branch of the superior mesenteric artery, and then you'll have varying numbers of jejunal and ileal branches that are going to form those arterial arcades. Venous drainage for this portions of the small intestine is strictly into the portal system via the superior mesenteric vein. And remember that superior meson mesenteric vein is what's going to join with the splenic vein to actually form the hepatic portal vein. So you can see it very beautifully in this image right here. The superior mesenteric plexus is what's going to innervate the jejunum and ileum and is composed of both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. Sympathetic fibers are going to be derived from thoracic splanchnic nerves, while the parasympathetic fibers are derived from the vagus nerve. So we're still in that proximal portion of the GI region. We're not to where you have uh, the more inferior portions, not vagus anymore. The sympathetic innervation is inhibitory to smooth muscle contraction and, of course, is a vasoconstrictor to vasculature. The parasympathetic innervation is motor to the smooth muscle, think rest and digest when thinking parasympathetics, 
and is also secretomotor to the mucosa associated with the small intestine. This concludes the overview of the jejunal and ileal portions of the small intestine. For additional information and images, please refer to the Blue Link website.